I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing that content is king. We get it. Hey guys, welcome back to this week's video. Thank you so much for tuning in as usual. I'm going to start doing my videos just a little bit differently. If you've watched any of them, uh, you'll know that I typically talk about one topic per video and then I move on. Now they're all related uh, as it relates to analytics or audience intelligence or influencer marketing, but I'm going to start doing more series focused videos. So it's one series and it may encompass two, three, four videos, probably about five to 10 minutes long. It's going to allow me to go just a little bit deeper on some topics. And that's some of the feedback that I've gotten from from colleagues and friends who watch my videos is sometimes I'm, I'm kind of up here with my high level thinking and I'm going to dig into the weeds and hopefully help you and, and provide, you know, uh, actionable insights for you to start thinking about uh, at your company or agency or whatever you do. And so over the next couple of videos, I'm going to talk about a report that was released last week by Altimeter Group, which is now Profit. And it's the 2021 state of digital content benchmarks for building an agile content system. Now, what's interesting about this is that back in January, I did a video about what I thought would be a trend in 2021 called agile storytelling. Now they're not exactly the same, but there's definitely some parallel thinking as it relates to content strategy, content marketing, and overall storytelling. So what I want to do is I'm going to walk through some of the data points and provide some context, and then also talk about ways to overcome some of the challenges that we found uh, in the data, as well as best practices on how to how to build what I would call a content engine. So thanks so much again for uh, tuning in and let's jump into it. And so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, defining what what Altimeter calls an agile content system. And uh, so let me just do that really quickly so that we're all on the same page. It's a set of specialized practices that allow companies to produce a large amount of content in a relatively short amount of time. The agile element refers to deploying the right type of content at the right time to the right person. And then I would add in the right channel. And so I think that's important. Uh, that's an important distinction here. And so when we say agile content system, it's, it's the operations that you have to build in order to ensure that you have all the tools, you have the right messaging, you have the right goals and analytics and everything um, in order to create um, what I would call a content engine, right? It's an engine of, it's, a, it's always moving, it's always listening, it's driven by data. And so I think that's important uh, to really think about as you are building your content marketing system uh, for your brand. And so before I jump into the, some of the challenges that marketers are facing when trying to produce and delivering relevant content, I just wanted to say that Altimeter surveyed about 375 individuals and throughout the report, they refer to them as executives. So these are senior people, directors, VPs, maybe CMO, CCO, who are running marketing organizations. So I would say the data is pretty solid, especially as I think about some of the challenges that I've, that I've encountered with um, working internally with brands, with clients. And so these are pretty solid. Now, the first one, and I think that this is one that hits, ho hits home for me, 23% uh, um, believe that producing relevant content based on customer data is a challenge. Now, again, this is something that I've talked about since the beginning of 2020, at least on video, but I've been writing about audience intelligence, data-driven storytelling for many years now. And it isn't easy, right? It's, it's very difficult to build audiences based on who, you, who you're trying to reach and then understand the affinities and the characteristics that make them unique from everybody else. And then also understanding what trends and topics are top of mind. And so I wanted to just share a few platforms out there that, that I've used in the past that I think might be helpful for you. Uh, the first one being Audience, uh, spelled with an S, and they're a, a software provider that allows you to build audiences and understand their affinities and you know who who they follow and what influencers that they're following what brands they're following what media publications they have strong affinity towards uh, others are affinio is another one um, but there are several others and i'll i'll link to a, a blog post where i'm kind of tracking the top audience intelligence platforms that you can refer to um, and there there's about 12 or 13 and there's more that are that are spawning up and um, and and launching so keep keep an eye on that uh, also I would say when you're thinking about like understanding those trends and topics a lot of these audience software platforms don't necessarily allow you to do that they can give you like top hashtags and things like that but if you want to understand like what an audience is talking about today you can use a platform like Brandwatch or Synthesio or 
NetBase or several others out there. And those allow you to track the conversation, right? So there's a difference between uh, identifying affinities, which is based on follower data, and then tracking conversation, which is based on social mentions. So that is the first area that I wanted to talk about. And the second data point I want to talk about revolves around staffing. And 16% of business leaders believe that hiring the right skills and people are challenging. And I think it makes sense. And I, I agree, right? Especially with 2020, uh, it was hard. Attrition was high. And, you know, you have people even now today in 2021, people are kind of moving around. And so hiring the right skills and people are certainly a challenge. But I want to talk about who the right people are um, in order to build an agile content system, which I would call a content engine. Now, I've talked about this many times before. And in fact, I, I did a video about it that I will link to um, as well if you look at the top here. But the first thing is, is you have to have an analyst, right? Because, um, and that kind of goes back to this first data point around uh, producing relevant content on customer data. An analyst will be the one to, um, or data scientist, spot a trend that is happening within an audience segment or audience group. Um, so an analyst is important. You're also going to need a copywriter, somebody who can write content quickly, a creative person, whether it's a motion graphics designer or a video, somebody who does video or just a graphic designer. Um, so being able to produce content quickly um, is going to be important. So you might need a paid media person as well. So somebody who understands how to promote content, understanding the differences between CPM, cost per click, understands the different ad units needed and the pixel dimensions for Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or, or TikTok. These are things that are going to be hugely important when in order to reach the right audience in the right channel, right? So that's another data point or uh, uh, insight that I think is important. And then lastly, somebody like a community manager or somebody who just manages the community, um, who's responsible for, you know, you know, uh, posting, you know, organic content. This person knows the community. He knows them. He is the advocate on behalf of the brand or rather on behalf of the people back to the brand. So those are the skills that, that you know, I think are, are going to be needed. Um, the analyst, copywriter, creative, um, designer, uh, paid media person, and also just your, your and, and some of these roles might you might have one person doing both but in order to be that content engine and you know once you spot that trend and being able to push out and publish content and promote it within an hour or so um, obviously it's it's easier said than done if it's on if you work for an agency and you need approval from the brand or you work on the brand side and you need approval from the brand team and so these things are you know i always say let's push for an hour but sometimes it's 24 hours the point is is it's still going to be much more effective than writing a content calendar for three months in the future. Okay, so that is, I think, another area that I wanted to just highlight. And then the last one is uh, purchasing or integrating the right software. Now, there's a lot of software out there that is available, right? There's analytic software, there's publishing software. So let me just highlight a few here um, that you can uh, research on your own. The first one is audience. And I, well, actually, I talked about the audience platforms, the customer data platforms. But then there's also Google Analytics, right? You can get interesting data around audiences who are coming to your website. Uh, Google has some pretty... Uh, um, in-depth uh, affinities around interest based on you know different websites they've been to uh, but also you can look at brand watch and other social listening platforms and even uh, in paid within you know paid social looking at some of the the audiences that you built um, in order to you know generate some insights based on the performance of content in the past so the the upfront analytics piece is pretty self-explanatory but that also addresses the measurement as well so as you're promoting content you're going to need to measure the effectiveness of it so if you have you know rival uh, rival iq or uh, you know sprout social or something those will help you kind of package it up into some type of report that will then you can send off to your teams but in terms of the actual workflow now i call this the content supply chain and the content supply chain basically is the, the process from the minute you have an idea to the second that it's published on social or in a blog post, that entire process is the supply chain. It's like, it's like any business supply chain, the raw material into a laptop. And so the, the, the supply chain, um, there's software out there and there's a lot of them out there. I'm going to highlight just a couple, Kapost being one. And honestly, I don't, I used to use Kapost and I believe they were acquired. So I didn't have time to do my research, but I will. But then there's also the kind of the social publishing platforms uh, like, you know, um, Koros or Sprinkler um, and even Sprout Social has the ability to um, identify the right approval workflow. 
And so that is going to be very important as you're uploading content and is it going to the right people quickly? Can they approve it? Can they leave comments? Can they push it back for, you know, to, for editing? That is the supply chain. And that, that to me is um, just as important as what the messaging is and what the audience data is and what the creative is, right? Because that is what's going to ensure that you are actual agile and you are being uh, and you are showing agility within the process of your content marketing now these other you know data points are super important and I'm not, I don't want to minimize any of these but I'm hoping that I'm just highlighting a few that I think again are actionable and for you to kind of go and do your own research um, so that you can make some decisions on on what platform or software you want to invest in uh, maybe it's around audience data or you know content publishing or measurement and then also hiring right so if you're looking for an agency and you work on the client side, who are the right folks on your team that are going to be servicing your account? And that, my friends, concludes our time together. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for your feedback and conversation as it relates to this report and content in general. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to continue this uh, dialogue around the Altimeter Group and their report they released on the state of digital content for 2021. So uh, until I see you next time, hope you have a great day and a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you soon.